Hey, welcome back, folks. Hope you don't mind the backdrop because you might be seeing a little more of it because it, uh, it's that time of year, it's winter, and it's pretty darn cold, and rather than lugging all my equipment outside, um, we're kind of sticking with doing stuff inside with it because it's just a whole lot easier on the equipment and a lot less work because it is quite cold out. Uh, depending on where you live, winter varies an awful lot. Around here, not very pleasant. Well, at least by most people's standards. I, Well, I don't like it, but kind of gotten used to it, been here my whole life. But uh, compared to a lot of places in the world, it's, it gets pretty harsh, but that's eh, not what I wanted to talk about anyhow. What I want to talk about is how, <clears throat> when we're doing things with a horse, how very, very often um, we got to do pretty much the opposite of what common sense says. And I've seen this applied in many, many cases. And, well, what made me really think about it again, that's not, you know, I mean, it's just habit for me now, so I don't really think about it much, but I've been helping somebody that's rather new to horses and just got a new horse, and so I've been working with them a bit. It's been a, a very pleasant experience. They're a great student, a great learner, willing to absorb knowledge. They learn very fast. Both them and the horse are doing extremely well. But in the process of explaining things to them, I've had to explain, and it has made me aware of just how often we do the complete opposite of what makes sense to me. Now, I'll give you one little example that I came across many years ago, and people taught me that when you're trying to catch a horse, uh, if it doesn't want to be caught, chase it away. Well, to me, that didn't make sense at all. Because my logic, my common sense in my brain says, I want to be as gentle as possible and do everything as po that possible to approach this horse in a way that it's not going to make it run away. I don't want to run. I want to catch it. I don't want to chase it away. That doesn't make sense. Well, in fact, they were actually on to something. I mean, they didn't explain to me exactly how it worked or why it worked and well perhaps they didn't because they didn't really know that is often the case and there's been a lot of advice I've gotten over the years that was never properly explained to me because in fact people didn't really know but uh, not everything that we do is exactly the opposite but quite often it is and quite often you got to kind of think outside the box and not just what makes sense in your head. A lot of times you got to do things very, very different than what seems to make sense. It's kind of like when you're trailer loading. A lot of people, I talked about this in trailer loading videos, get up to the trailer and they think, man, I got the horse this close, just put a little more pressure on him, we can get him in. Well, the problem with that is you got to do exactly the opposite because once you get him up to that trailer, if you start putting pressure on him, Horse figures, you know what, go near that trailer is not a good idea because every time I go near the trailer, I get pressure put on me. So in fact, you have to do the complete opposite in order to make the trailer a good place that the horse actually wants to be near or possibly even in. Well, eventually that's what you want. So it's another example right there. Well, quite often there's a lot of examples like, well, I'm not going to elaborate on all of them because that would take way too long, but for example, if you want the horse to stand still for grooming, trimming, saddling, just about any time you want the horse to stand still. If it doesn't want to stand still, you don't try and make it stand still. Well, it sounds backwards, doesn't it? But in fact, well, there's no point in even trying to make it stand still because, you know, even a good-sized person, that horse is probably going to outweigh you 5 to 1. Depending on your size and the size of the horse, could be 6, maybe 7 to 1. Heck, we got one here that outweighs me probably eight to one. But I can make them stand still without getting in a fight with them that I am not going to win. Because if he wants to move, I let him move. In fact, I tell him he's going to have to move a whole lot more. Pretty soon he decides moving's not such a good idea. Well, making the horse move, well, again, it's kind of like catching the horse. You just send it off. And pretty soon the horse decides, I think I'm just going to stand still. It's a lot less work. So very often what we have to do to do the right thing is actually the opposite of what our brain tells us that we're supposed to be doing. 
Right? And it's a, kind of a hard concept to wrap our head around. For a lot of us, we're going to struggle with it. It takes a while to get the hang of it. Uh, for me, it's become, I've done it enough now that it becomes pretty much second nature. I don't even think about what makes sense anymore because, you know, let me tell you, when you're working with horses, there ain't a whole lot to make sense. Well, it does once you think about it in from the horse's perspective. It makes sense. But from the human perspective, no. Quite often you're going to have to do the complete opposite. So, you know, be prepared to do things that don't make sense. Be prepared to think outside the box and be prepared to quite often do the exact opposite of what your head tells you you're supposed to be doing. Have a good day.